I, I was uh, reminded recently, uh, I, I was in, in New Jersey for this thesis defense yes. and visited the uh, Orange County Coke. VA Medical Center there, VA Medical Center, and talked about CLL. And I met a couple of uh, residents or fellows, one of who is, I believe, coming uh, to uh, Mount Sinai in July uh, to be a part yeah. of your CLL program. And she reminded me that uh, you began your career as a pediatrician. Yes. Uh, would you care to comment upon yes. that? Yes. Yes, that is quite uh, true. I'm, I'm in, in impressed that this person you met in uh, uh, the VA hospital knew about that. Yes, I was, I always wanted to be a pediatrician. When I was growing up and as a child I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a person taking care of children, particularly children in the villages of India where because I had seen when I went to visit my uncle who was a, uh, for a while a doctor in the village of Jodhpur region where I was born and I saw young babies and children really suffering from anemia, malnutrition, infections and I said when I become a physician, I become a doctor, I'll come back here and take care of them. That was my ambition. And that is why I came to America for my pediatric training. My idea was that I would get myself trained and go back to India and practice pediatrics in the villages near Jodhpur. So I came here in 1957 as a resident in pediatrics at a hospital of the city of New York, a municipal hospital called the Lincoln Hospital, and uh, had a great time. Learning experience was great, taking care of children, getting to know the parents. This was a blue-collar community, mostly uh, African Americans and some uh, Hispanic in the South Bronx and uh, within a matter of few weeks your life as a pediatric resident you are spending a good amount of time in the emergency room meeting all the parents who bring their babies and getting to know each other on a first name basis and uh, we had to learn a lot and uh, then for the second year after Lincoln Hospital, I was chosen to be the chief resident at uh, North Shore Hospital, the hospital where I currently am, the larger hospital system. And it was there when I was doing my uh, residency that I met Arthur Savisky, who had brought a child, a three-year-old child, who had acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And that child really, the exposure and the responsibility of taking care of that little girl, whom I got to like very much and felt responsible for, and who died six months later. This is in 1958, so 52 years ago. And that challenged me and my mentor recognized how upset I was, how uh, bothered I was by the leukemia, that he stimulated, he guided me. He said that I should do a fellowship in hematology. And then from there, which I did at Long Island Jewish Hospital, and from there he guided me to go into research. And that led me to Brookhaven National Laboratory in Long Island and a great institution for hematology research and I worked with Gene Cronkite and 
in Cronkites, by this time I had already passed pediatric board so that I became a board certified person and then I started research. And there I saw multiple myeloma, chronic myeloid leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, acute leukemia and uh, no children. And I became more and more involved in cell kinetics, bone marrow and peripheral blood of leukemia because Cronkite was the, the leader in the field and it was fascinating to do the studies with traditional thymidine infusion for labeling and uh, in vivo labeling by giving infusions to the patients. And uh, before you know it, I became an adult leukemia person far away from a treating children and never went back to pediatrics. I regret it to some extent, but I also know that our professional careers are a matter of serendipity, who influences you during your training period, and what circumstances and what patients influence you, and that guides your career so that not necessary that whatever you have prejudged that this is what you want to be, that you become. And I'm grateful where I am. You have spoken about uh, mentors a lot uh, during this interview. Uh, I recall earlier in one of our discussions uh, that your uncle, who was a physician uh, in India, I think he also influenced your concept of care. Uh, if you wanted to comment upon that. Great degree. My uncle was really the original role model for me. And uh, he, was, he was the younger brother of my father. The, 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 the two of them had about two years age difference. But my father, being the older and the patriarch of the family, uh, he, had, he had the authority. And my uncle was no, no less person, but he remained as though he was yet another child of my father. So he was more friend than uncle or father figure. And uh, he was a wonderful doctor, very, very caring, great sense of humor. and light manner, that is nothing pompous, nothing stiff sh shirt type of thing. He was accessible to everybody. He was always smiling, always helping. Anybody who needed any help, medical or non-medical, he was there to help. And uh, that was, you know, my father also was a very helpful person. But he was a stiff person. He was a much more of a disciplinarian. And we were, we had love and warmth for my father, but more fear. Whereas my uncle, love and no fear and friendship and they could open and talk and he would do things which only uncles can do. And when he was posted, this is a government uh, uh, doctor profession, when he was posted in a village near the, uh, our city, I went to visit with him. And uh, it was really quite an experience. It was a hot desert area of uh, Rajasthan. And uh, every morning we wake up and uh, uh, there was a line of camels, two or three camels, with the camel driver sent by different uh, families to fetch the doctor for a house call because somebody in the family was ill. So once in a while, I would, uh, you know, my uncle would go on top of a camel and uh, ride, and uh, after seeing the patient, would come back. Once or 
twice, maybe more than that. I would say, could I, I was like seven, eight years old. Could I come for a ride on the camel? Okay, you can come, but you can't be a nuisance. You should stay with the camel while I go and see the patient and then we'll come back. Behave, okay? So I behaved. But when my uncle went inside the house, the inside the house somebody would find out that the doctor's son is outside near the camel. So they would come and fetch me and inside and treat me with a great degree of goodies and sweets. So we come back and I was well behaved. So I said to myself, hey, being a doctor is wonderful. You try to treat and help people and then your children are well treated with goodies, so nothing is wrong about that. So that, and my uncle also influenced me a lot in many respects in discussion and the excitement of diagnosis and treatment. 